The Falcon platform supports most of the more popular Linux distros in use today. In most cases, downloading the most recent version of the Falcon sensor for a particular distro is the best course of action. However, an appendix of supported kernels is available in the Falcon user interface in the support section. Start by verifying that your version of Linux and kernel are supported. For this demo, I'll deploy the Falcon sensor on three different Linux distros. The steps are very similar to each other, but vary slightly for each. Make sure to follow the instructions for your specific OS. I'll start with Ubuntu. I've already downloaded the installer package, and using the install command, I'll begin the process. Within seconds, step one of the install is complete. In the next two steps, you'll need to assign your specific customer ID that can be found in the host app. Once the customer ID or SID is applied, the last step is to start the Falcon Sensor process using the service Falcon Sensor Start command. If you're not logged in with root privileges, make sure to sudo the command. These three steps complete the install process and are repeated with only slight variations for the different flavors of Linux. Assigning the SID associates the newly deployed sensor to the correct customer Falcon user interface and starting the Falcon sensor process begins the process of the host checking in with the cloud and applying the correct policies. The CentOS install is very similar to the Ubuntu and other Linux installs. CentOS and Amazon Linux use the yum install command to install the Falcon sensor package. When that's complete, the same command used previously for Ubuntu is used to assign the host to a customer ID. The command to start the Falcon Sensor service is systemctl for both CentOS and Amazon Linux. The last system is a SUSE Linux Enterprise server. To begin the install process, use the zipper install command. Confirm the install by typing Y. From here, apply the customer ID just as we have done in the previous examples. And the last step is to start the service by using the service Falcon Sensor start command, similar to Ubuntu. Now we need to validate that the SID has properly been applied. The easiest way to do this is in the Falcon user interface. Back in the UI, on the host dashboard, we see there are recently installed sensors. Drilling into this information, we see our three Linux systems. Since we see them in the UI, we know the SID was properly applied and the sensor started. At this point, the system can begin to receive policies and other updates. It may take some time for all the host information to populate in the UI. However, the new systems will appear in the user interface within a few minutes of the initial install. Now that all systems appear in the Falcon UI, we'll run a simple command on each to generate our first detection. However, I'll just show it on one. A common attack against Linux machines is to run files with incorrect file extensions as a way to obfuscate behavior. Falcon detects this behavior and generates an alert. We'll run the common command who am I, only with an odd .rtf file extension. This behavior will trigger a detection. Back in the Falcon UI, we have new detections for each system. Further inspection confirms that these detections are associated with the defense evasion and masquerading. CrowdStrike Falcon works to protect all types of environments, from Windows and Mac to the many different flavors of Linux. Here we see that installation is easy and visibility into these systems is comprehensive. For more information on CrowdStrike Falcon on Linux or any other systems, check us out at CrowdStrike.com.